My name is Jackie Thompson. I'm the Ardbeg Distillery Visitor Centre Manager here on Isla. For the festival this year, we are embracing our inner performers and um, the Whiskey Creation team have concocted a beautiful recipe for a bottling that we've done and we like to bring that to life and that's what we do at Ardbeg. We've been doing it for 20 years, dressing up and um, engaging people and creating memories by bringing beautiful whiskies to life. So this year um, we have created a whisky called Spectacular which is um, a marriage of Ardbeg from bourbon barrels and the first time we've ever used port pipes. So it's a very unique characteristic, but spectacular enables and allows us to bring our inner circus vibes. So we're going to be doing a little bit of vintage circusing here at the distillery with um, a few surprises, lots of vibrant color, and we all get dressed up and we'll, we'll have a wonderful, wonderful time, I hope. Isla Whiskey, gosh, my dad used to say it was running through my veins, but um, it just encapsulates everything that is here on the island. It's it's not just that liquid, but it forms beautiful friendships and, as I said, love affairs and the natural beauty of Isla um, allows silence and peace and whiskey drinking and wit and fun there's a great wit on isla and i think that's um often travels beautifully with the whiskey as well i think the way of life of isla transcends the liquid in so many ways it's a tapestry of of so many things that just connects me to the landscape and to the liquid it's landscape and liquid and language as well so isla affects our bags whiskey in a lot of different ways it's a I think the sense of place that Isla has, it's a, there's a great word, topophilia, and it has a real strong cultural identity and a strong sense of place. And I think Isla absolutely has had that for forever, you know, since the Gales and the Picts and the Vikings and the Lords of the Isles all came. And I think all of these things are in part of the DNA of any of Isla's drams. And for Ardbeg, the natural resources we have, of course, play such a huge part in what we're doing. Um, these are here in abundance. It's history, it's geology, it's geography, and people come for so many different reasons. I think that's another thing with whiskey. People can come for a multitude of reasons to visit an island that is embedded in history. They come for so many reasons, but whiskey often is the thing that kind of pulls people together. So um, Isla as a place, it's also a very challenging place to come to. So you feel you're on an adventure. So Isla challenges your sense of adventure as well as your palate. So Arbeg has a really rich history. Um, it is, it's been quite a volatile history over the last couple of hundred years. Um, everything from, you know, this beautiful village that uh, is still here. And there were 40 houses, there were 200 people lived in the village, and we had these really strong familial ties. And, and I think that kind of resonates even today. You know, we'll have weddings and funerals and um, all sorts of life events here at the distillery from people that have a dotted line to its history. There were periods when it was also, I think it, it for any story of any place that manufactures or makes something really lovely, periods of, of, of success and periods of, of wow. challenge, um, make it all the more evocative, I think. And, and you know, Ardbeg has had those. It hasn't been plain sailing for a couple of hundred years in any way, shape or form. It's had its, uh, it's, had its ups and downs. It's a place where, you know, the, the, just across, we can, we're 20 miles from Northern Ireland. So we had the gales and the picts and uh, we look out to sea in the Lords of the Isles who battled in their naivig boats just off the coast of Isla. And um, we've got shipwrecks just outside the shore of Ardbeg because the, the little scaries and rocks, you know, we had many, many boats that went down, mail ships, cargo ships, fishing boats, all sorts of things. So it, it really is a, a very evocative and, and, and passionate history that Ardbeg has had over the years. And people are coming for the whiskey, but want to find out much, much more about the provenance of, of you know, the place and the sense of place. And they'll come from all over the world. 
all over the world. Um, on Isla, we have just over 3,000 residents and many, many committees for all sorts of things. Um, many of us at the distillery from the team sit on committees. And way back in 1997, we knew that because Ardbeg didn't really have much stock, it didn't have many customers, it wasn't a single malt, we needed to find our tribe and to start to find our tribe. So in the year 2000, we formed our own committee and that committee um, is now 180,000 strong. But at that time it was, you know, a small band of very vocal advocates who loved Ardbeg. And because there was not a big budget at that time, we reached those people by putting a little um, questionnaire inside the bottles, inside the bottles of 10 year old when we brought out 10 year old in 2008. And we asked them to fill them in and they sent them to the distillery. And we got three a week, then we got 10 a week, then we got 50 a week, then we got 100 a week. And people were sending them back and wanting to join the Ardbeg committee. Um, and it's a, a really quirky, witty, intelligent band of people that we communicate with um, often, telling them about what's happening here at the distillery um, and how we make the whiskey. So it's, um, yeah, all that history. And we talk a lot about day-to-day -day life here at the distillery, the witty stuff, the sad stuff, the daft stuff, all of that stuff. And it gives people that emotional connection to the distillery, which is so vitally important. Gosh, that's a big question. Um, our production process, of course, making a wonderful spirit is all about your raw ingredients. It's about putting them together and creating something which is um, indicative of the spirit that you want to create at your distillery. So it's all about those resources, having respect for them, those ingredients and seeing how they interact, striving to achieve um, a very great quality new make spirit thereafter it's all about the whiskey creation team choosing the casks for maturation choosing occasionally to do something different within the production process to see how the liquid travels or striving to achieve something we want a specific flavor profile in our whiskey so um it's all about those resources and how they interact and making a great quality spirit Ardbeg 10 year old became our flagship whiskey. It's the whiskey which kind of for us embodies the distillery. There was a precedent because Ardbeg as a single malt was not found very readily. So it became a bit of a cult whiskey. I think at the time when Glen Morangy took over in 1997, um, we released a number of whiskies leading up to our Ardbeg 10, which were six, seven, nine, and 10 years old. And that kind of gave people a flavor of what our 10 year old would be. It's a real peaty paradox. It's smoky, it's peaty, it's balanced. It is a wonderful, intriguing, and very good bang for your buck 10 year old. This was a, a distillery that's been here over 200 years. And there was a real familial feel then even when Elach people, Isla people left Isla and you had this diaspora of people that left Isla, a lot of them had an attachment to Ardbeg. And I think we've retained that kind of familial feel, but a lot of fun, um, emotional attachments, connections, you know, dressing up, embracing very, very warmly people who come through the door. Very often people are here. It's not just a little brief encounter that they have with Ardbeg. It's a it's a kind of longer term love affair. So I think all of those things, having a sense of fun, creating great whiskey, the emotional attachments to the distillery and starting out at a time which enabled you to embrace people and a different different set of consumers and take them on the journey with us.